Hi. Hi. I, I was here the whole time last week, just so you know. I was asleep in my room. You guys should have woken me. You know, my room. My room is right there. Well, I, I would have thought that if we were we were we were probably loud enough that you would have woken up. No. You, you know, I like sleeping the background noise. So. Oh, so we're just your background noise, are we? Yeah. You know what? I'm gonna come out and say it. I I hate Cast Ranger. I've always hated it. This is just Whoa. a show, an, an act. I fucking hate no. everything. I hate Toku. I hate fucking that. No. Cast Ranger no. Civil War. I really don't. I don't mean that. <laughs> I'm always like, no, no, I don't mean that. That's not true. That's impossible. <laughs> you used to be my brother. You used to be my caster. No, I am Pink Caster. No. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Cue the roll call. So We're live! Zenkai Gun! Connect. Loading. Broadcast. Equipment Wheeler. Bluecaster. Cheat is a zeal. Loyal and loud. Bluecaster late! One little spark of courage. Dreamcaster, Global South Perka! Broadcasting loud and opinionated perspectives across the internet! Radio Sentai Cast Ranger. On air! Welcome to episode 196. May the fourth be with you, everybody! Oh yeah, it's May 4th! Yeah, it's Star Wars Day, even though I'm more excited for tomorrow, which is Revenge of the Fifth. Oh, yeah, fucking I cooler. forgot about that. No, I told like all my coworkers that today. They all they all giggled at. It. They're like, ah, "Revenge of the Fifth." I was like, yeah. "That's great." I I actually I re I knew that was a thing, but I completely forgot about it. Let me start this off with what I hope will become my newest catchphrase. One, two, three. I'm not sponsored by Pepsi, but I would like to be. Me too. Well, no. Ugh. If I want to be, if I would want to be sponsored by anything, it would probably be stuffed bagel bites if those still existed. <laughs> oh, no, those are my. That was like my favorite snack of all time. And if I ever saw those come back, that's my desert island food. Like if I was trapped <laughs> on a desert island and I could only have one food for the rest of my life, it'd be stuffed bagel bites. Those things are fucking ugh, so good. Um. So yeah, hi, I'm back from outer space. I, I didn't mean to leave. Um, just. He was going through some character development off screen. Yeah. Um, but I told Gar to fuck off, so he fucked off. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Whoa. He, uh, he, did, he unfortunately couldn't watch everything uh, in time this week. Uh, couldn't get home, so. Because he's in, he's in Dunville. His, his lovely home, which we've visited, and it's a cool place. So, uh, this week we are talking about Build, episode 33. Yep. Lupin Ranger, episode 12. Powder Ranger, episode 12. And now that we are finally free from the steely disco clutches of Metal April... Oh, yeah. By the way, so, yeah, the, these guys talked about the Kikaida reboot last week, and I wasn't there for it, so I watched it this week. God, that sucked! <laughs> was so... No, like, okay. Okay, oh just, my, like, that, quickly, that, That's quickly. a big one coming from... The, the, the sister sucked. She was the worst character in the entire fucking movie. The two best characters in the movie were fucking uh, the, 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 the web journalist and the old guy who ran, like, the, the creepy, junk shop. The creepy stalker who came to her school and home? Yeah, well, it's because he wanted Vipo and her dad or whatever like that. And uh, probably Hakider. Like, that was, like, I didn't realize, like, his full name was, it was, like, Gilbert Kenzaki, and then he's just, like, it's, like, oh, Professor Gil, like, oh! Yeah. Um, but, yeah, fucking, Kikaida was so, Jiro was so bland, and, like, like by robots, the, the wire work was pretty cool, the action was, like, semi-decent, but other than that, it was just, like, because, like, it went, okay, it's gonna be, like, an hour, right? Hour and 49 minutes? But, but it was, it was okay, like... I, I wouldn't watch it again. It was, it was I, very I mad. It was one of those movies that really played off those oh, they referenced the thing moments. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. Kikaider, stay in the 70s where you belong. Ah! We, we don't. I, I can see why they didn't go anywhere further with this reboot. No eyes. No like, they, even, they even tried promoting it in Guy, which is like one of the best writer series ever, and that still wasn't enough to fucking... Everyone's like, 
Yeah, no, go go back to Gaim. It, it's, <laughs> it's more interesting. It's like Kikaider was something we tripped on on our road through the best show. Holy shit, man. Oh, but yeah. Anyways, let's make a boy. <laughs> let's make a boy. Why shouldn't we make a boy? <laughs> That's because it's on the computer. Oh. That's what I, I was telling you this, that people on the Discord won't be able to hear it, but it'll still be in the episode. Okay. Anyways, so, do you want to give your comment on last week's episode? I don't remember anything other than, like... It was about Banjo like, finding out he's Martian. Sure, which wasn't really, ooh, and Rogue rescued a bunch of people. Yeah. That, that, that was it. I, I honestly, like, drew a fucking blank in that episode, because nothing interesting happened. It was a weird like, Yeah, dip. last week seemed Rogue a bit... Rogue bad dad or something. I don't fucking know. And that's pretty much what this episode opens on. Yeah... The fucking recap is like, but doesn't anyone care that I'm Martian? <laughs> and like photoshops his face with like tears and stretches his mouth out. He looks like a fucking weird. Well, no, that, that could this happen to me? <laughs> I didn't mean it. Um. Oh, so the episode opens proper with Banjo trying to poke Pandora's box and unleash his godly yeah. Martian powers I, 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 while I, they're I, in the build pit. I'm seeing him touch it, and I'm just like. Don't do that! The last person who did that spawned a giant wall that cut the country in twain! And then and then Misora went over and grabbed it, and I was just like, you know, we haven't seen in a while, Vernage. I'm surprised, like, being the Queen of Mars, she doesn't have some fucking power over the Pandora's box. You know what it is? Vernage is like Xeranos. We've only got so many uses of her left. Like, I guess Pandora's box was built by Evolt, so that's why he has, like, full control over the whole goddamn thing. So, Wait, was it built by him? Well, it's pretty safe to say that was his thing. I think it is, but what we did is, when Sento is looking at the blueprints or, like, the info on the Evolt driver, I took a couple of screenshots, so I'm going to post those here in the chat, and then we're going to look at these. Because these go by really fast, so we're going to read these. They're not quite hot level, but they're pretty good. So, uh, Evolve Driver Restoration and Assembly Order. Evolve Driver is the type of Ignitor equipment that generates the metaphor metamorphosis of Evolto by forming its high-power propulsive. To activate the quote-unquote ultimate power of Evolto, this driver will be essential. Evolto is the extraterrestrial life which is assumed to have destroyed the planet, Mars, by Pandora Box. It means that this driver makes Evolto handle as much power as Pandora Box could have. It is assumed that you could even control the universe with this driver. Uh, uh, Evolve versus Genmu level billion, please. Needless to say, his driver is closely related to the power of Pandora Box, which has been transferred from Mars to the Earth. Since some parts of Evolve Driver were found fallen apart around Pandora Box, it is assumed that the driver itself consumes the power of the box. Furthermore, Soichi Isarugi, the astronaut who had found and transferred the box, is the only person who can use the driver. Soichi Isarugi says that he himself is Evolto since he was captured on Mars. <laughs> so it is Evolto, not Evolt. I think you could go either way at this point. I'm calling him Evolt. Uh, uh, this reminds me of something that happened recently in Precure, where a character wrote her name on the board as Ruru. Oh, yeah? Ruru. Um, yes. <laughs> so looking at our next scan here, our next screenshot, uh, what I, this, I think this is after they clicked on Soichi's name. This actually provides a lot of insight into his backstory that is not really addressed in the show. Mr. Isarugi suddenly came down with a fever of 39.5 Celsius on the way back to Earth. On most of his flights, he slept in the airlock in the mid-deck of the probe. It was also the coldest part of the probe by about 10 degrees. Evolto says the fever was needed to adjust itself to Mr. Isarugi's body because he resisted the possession. The position of the probe put Earth in Nagano, Japan, where he woke up and the whole world was out there in front. He knew he just got <laughs> a new planet to D-Story. To D-Story! Which means that on his way back to Earth, Evolto 
while possessing Soichi, stuck him in a cold room to give him a fever in order to make his mind and body weak enough to finish possessing him. That's fucking intense! You clever son of a bitch! And, like, you... No, and what's the funniest part about all this is this was all recorded by fucking Sento's dad, so... He knew that, like... I think so. Soichi fu- didn't come back as, like, himself, so he should have gotten this guy just I think this arrested fi- I think and locked this, away permanently. I think these files were written by Takumi. Yeah, but that's still Sento. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's pre-Sento. Yeah. Huh. Proto-Sento. Proto-Sento. Uh, and then moving on, moving on here, uh, at the, the, the Skywall Disaster Day, Evolto finally tried to open Pandora Box at the Salamony... Yes, that says Salamony. Salamony. To celebrate the successful return of Kiwami, which is the space probe. However, no, it means the return of fucking guy Koda from, from space. From space. From space. <laughs> <laughs> However, against his plan, the box wrongly spreaded his destructive power to Earth. As a result, Skywall was built. Which means that when Skywall happened... That was completely an accident. Evolt was trying to access the power of Pandora's box to create Pandora's tower, but instead Skywall happened. That's a movie we need to so be made it now. it just has the power to make a giant wall for no apparent reason? I don't know. We need... Okay, hear me out on this. So we need a movie that has Gai and Kiwami arms, Genmu, level billion... And Evolt. Evolt. Just have the space god, the game god, and the, and the other space, and the Martian god. <laughs> That'd be amazing. That would actually be kind of neat. That'd be a fucking sick. Kamen Rider Battle of Gods. It, exactly. Well, there was an April Fool's joke was that Battle of CEOs thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. The Genmus? Yeah. Oh, I would great. love that. Yup, bye. All right, and then moving on to our third scan, which is more about the Evolve driver itself. This also provides a bit of interesting information. <laughs> like what? Uh, pointing to different parts on the belt, uh, the Evolution Charger. This is the foundation of Evolto to create and explode the power of itself. To restore the body of Evolto, it is said that one must have the hazard level of 5. It is never possible for a human being to be level 5. Another driver will do? Oh, so this is probably why he makes the build driver. Because that one only requires a hazard level of three. Yeah, so you know well, what? Because yeah. remember, the reason the reason uh, fucking Katsuragi made all this shit in the first place was only because he was like, I want to make a, a thing that'll like defend the peace and justice and all that shit. So he thought, I guess, having the evil driver, he thought he could do that and then just was like, oh, I, 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 you can't. No physical human can wield this. So, And he didn't want to trust uh, Soichi with it because, you know, cuckoo. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. So then he's like, okay, I'll just base a driver off of the evil driver. And I'll that's how just the build make a bootleg version and make it sleek and gray. So basically... Like what, with blackjack and hookers. So what this sounds like is that what Stark is doing is trying to get banjo's hazard level up to five at least and then probably take him over because you know what maybe it's a human can't get to level five but a martian can get to level five so maybe that's since it. banjo since banjo it, has it, it says here it is never possible for a human being to be level five so but yeah. some being possibly but since banjo has martian dna in him it's possible for him to be level yeah five. so uh Ooh. moving along the the EV lever, like the crank. A lever. Lever, whatever. To generate the power of two EV bottles and to restore Evolto, this lever has to be rotated. It is closely connected with the charger, so it is even possible for a human to rotate. For a human. <laughs> so, Not the so, Zognoid. Yeah. So you don't re- have to have... You don't have to have hazard level 5 to touch the crank. Okay, now and that's how we have to fucking say the rest of the shit. After restoring Evolto, it works also it works as a detonator of its explosive power. That's talking with the heat. Totally not a Zogdoid. <laughs> the EV module. The whole thing composing Evolto would come out from this module. However, it is not imaginable what kind of substance would it be. 
And then we have the EV bottle slot. Two EV bottles have to be set before restoring. However, one of them is found extremely broken or a new EV bottle with terrestrial materials has to be created. So now I'm curious if this is referring to the Cobra bottle or the Rider System bottle. I like to think the Cobra. Because there's, there's the argument that like, oh, how could something from Mars use a power based on like a Cobra? Oh, you know what? It had to be the Rider System because that was probably based off of the evil drivers, like, innards. I don't know. I like to think so. And then if we go over here, the EV guard case, which is like the little handle thing. So, which means evil, Commander Evil, is literally using the powers of a cobra and the power of the evil driver in a bottle. That's what so I'm saying. Yeah, so he's it's already the using the power of, the of a belt. belt. In the belt right? that's already has that said power inside it. Right. That's that's broken. Right. Oh, geez. now I want to see. I'm, I'm really curious to see what happens when you use the rider system bottle in the build driver. It's just not I like the idea of there being a rider bottle because it means technically we can make up any rider we want using just one bottle. Right. Okay. Officially now, so. I don't collect build stuff anymore, but I do. There is one more bottle I do want to get, and that's the Keisatsu bottle. If they, it ever comes out, it, it'll have to because they have to make the the drive. They don't have to. The, punch. They will, though. We talked about it. We talked about it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, definitely, we can be getting that. And then uh, finally, on this scan, the EV guard case. Because of its overwhelming power of regenerating Evolto, the driver has to be protected from its heat, damage, and urgent change of temperature. The case must be reinforced with terrestrial materials. Huh. So I guess they had to repair it on Earth. Yeah, I guess so. So yeah, that's all the info I could find regarding those blueprints. Yeah, and like they try, Interesting. With, they try like searching the evil driver in uh, Katsuragi's notes, but every time they tried searching it, it just uh, responded with, nobody knows. Nobody so then, perfect. So then... Uh, that's when Sento's like, oh, let me put in this data that you stole from Namba and just it and plug it in with Ta uh, Katsuragi's data and then typed in nobody, search nobody knows. Bam. They found the data. Yep. So that was cool. So. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, they talk about, so Stark calls up Sento and he's like, well, we have the president, so give us the Evolve driver, this thing you've never heard of, or we pop him in the head. Yeah, and if you're a minute late, I'll kill him. <laughs> I'll kill him. I'll kill him. I think he said, like, if you're even uh, a minute late or even, was it seconds or a minute? A minute. Yeah. Yes. You can okay, be 59 so like... seconds late, but that's it. Okay. <laughs> And then we get, and then we get like uh, Stark, like kind of talking to Soichi, just being like, "Haha, it's been a while since I've talked to you, huh?" And Soichi's just like, "You get away with this," and he's like, "Oh, I already have." What so, is like, that can, from? So I know still, it's from. Oh, I know it is. Um, but yeah, Soichi, Soichi is still <laughs> in there, and he's still trying to his best to fight back. But it just, yeah. it, Stark is more powerful. Unfortunately. So like over the episode, we, we see that happen, and that's when I turn to Lane, and I'm like. So we were completely right! Yeah. Stark was possessing Soichi. It's not been him the whole show! Which means it's been really awkward when Stark had to pretend to be Soichi during those touching family moments in the first 12 episodes. Yeah, probably uh, just... Your mind probably, looks at Smudge's yeah. writing on hand. Dotar? <laughs> just, like... He, but if we go back and see earlier episodes of him having, like, feelsy moments with all these characters, you can slightly just see him going, like... <laughs> just, like trying to hold in his vomit. Yeah, that's the thing. Knowing what we know now, going back to rewatch the early episodes is going to be really fucking tainted. I don't understand Earth coffee. <laughs> that's why he was bad at coffee! Oh, yeah, because he doesn't know! Oh, oh my, my god! god. <laughs> I was joking! No, good job, Emily. Holy shit. Why wasn't there a coffee full bottle? <laughs> and he didn't understand how to use the iPad, so he's like, yeah, fuck it, back scratcher. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Mars doesn't have iPads, but it has a surplus, a freaking crap load of, yeah, of no, Mars crackers. This is what I don't understand with the evil driver. So this is from Mars, which... So what? They have cobras on Mars, Ode to Joy, and the word chow. 
I like to think these were all things that were added when Takumi repaired it. Yeah, I guess or, or so. Ch- or when Shinobu repaired it. His yeah, dad, it, was, it was his dad who built it. I, I feel like that's the easiest explanation we can settle on for now. Yeah. So we see Gentoku and uh, Nariaki as they're staring menacingly at Bat Dad in this prison cell. And I just love that Utsumi just like leans over Gentoku. Psst. By the way, after they hand over the Evolve driver, I'm going to stab your dad right in the dick. And then, like, I can't remember, but I, I think it was... I don't recall him being that specific. And then, like, Bad Dad, Bad Dad was, like, uh, right. talking about something, and then it, like, apparently set Nariaki off. He's oh. like, no, fuck you! Because he was, he was talking about how a nation isn't defined just by its leader. And and Nariaki was just like, no, fuck you. That's everything. Like, a nation is, isn't anything without its leader. So. So. And then again, Toku's just like, yeah, oh, by, the, by the way, I'm not evil. Yeah, so as as expected, this was the proper debut of Gentoku's redemption arc. Good Toku. Yeah, good Toku. <laughs> I think that's this the is good name. Toku. Good Toku. You know, you know what it needs to be? It needs to be that shot of just of just uh, Gentoku when he's like hedging into Rogue, and then just he has like a halo over his head because he's good. <laughs> I'll see if I can chop and it a just smile does the hallelujah just... sound effect from like the holy hand grenade. Hallelujah. Sorry, that go. was stupid. No, that was funny. Um, yeah, uh, and then so so, we, so Gentoku and uh, Stark go over the fact that since he went under the experimentation to become Common Rider Rogue, the aggression that he was undergoing th- because of the Pandora's light was apparently negated. Well, that's a "Quote unquote explanation for why he's not an asshole anymore." I feel like that's sort of counterintuitive. I feel like they added that because they realized it was a plot hole. But I feel like they wrote themselves into a corner with that one because it's like, if touching, if being bathed in the light of Pandora's box caused him to become aggressive and evil and whatever, why would being subject to the nebula gas, which came from the Pandora's box, negate it? I don't know, like. Yeah, I, I was honestly I guess you okay can think with that. Of it as like um, the two th- components that make up salt, like table salt, are both incredibly toxic on their own. Uh, maybe. Or face corner chat is saying that maybe it's something resembling the mind erasure thing. That the, or it's the, like a, it's like a, it's like a chemical mixture. You know, some chemicals they react differently to each other when like you put the wrong chemical with another. I chemical. feel like that's exactly what Emily just said. Y- yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, I just it's... did a very bad job explaining. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. I mean, like, I'm okay with there not being a super, super well thought out explanation for it. I'm just glad that Gentoku's it, getting it. It, it, it. it just wore off. <laughs> you don't need more of that super stuff. It's starting to wear off. <laughs> Space Jam. God damn it! Five weeks in a row. <laughs> but Gentoku says that he w- like Stark explains that Gentoku was just pretending to still be an asshole. So he could do the dirty work he needed to unite Japan back into one country, then hand it off to Bat Dad because he knows that he's not suited to running a country, but his dad is. And I think that's brilliant. Yeah. That's actually kind of sweet. I, I'm like so There's happy. There's a one way you're calling him Bat Dad. <laughs> I know that's been a thing for a while, but it... I'm like, should we now call... Wanna... Should we call him Croc Dad now? Well, no, let's call him Croco Dad. No, yeah, Croco Dad. Croco Dad. Whatever we call him, we won't be calling him anything for much longer. Oh, uh, womp womp. Um, yeah. So, spoilers. See, he, he he dies. Like he get, he takes a blast for for Gentoku, and like I, I don't think anyone was expecting that to happen. So, like, he just jumped into the blast, got hit, and, like, we see, like, the burnt marks on his outfit and stuff, and I was just like, whoa, that's, that's a real father right there. And, oh, man, that actually hit hard. Yeah, and, like, it was super, oh, but it was so funny when, like, he, like, they kept giving him the evil driver, and he kept trying to run off, and then, like, some of them would block him, and then, like, he gets to the van or whatever like that, and then, like, just like if Stark shows up and like they're just all standing there and I'm like, get in the van, get in the van, get, get the in fuck the in. van and leave, you just fucking just, morons. Just run Stark over, who the fuck cares? <laughs> <Come> <laughs> run on. him over. Yeah, just run him over. 
I don't think that'll work. I think that would be like a um, Jeepers Creepers situation. Oh, he just like tr stop the car. No, where he just where he gets run over, but then he just gets right back up. Or it's like in uh, I think it was like in one of the Friday Thirteenth movies where like they try running over Jason, but then Jason just is so strong that he just like the car crashes into him and just like. No, you know what would happen? Stark would pull out a steam blade and cut the car clean in half. Ugh! Just turns into a cobra. Which he did. A cobra. And then Rogue proceeded to turn to a phoenix. So that was cool. Yeah. <laughs> that, I actually got confused and thought that that was uh, Banjo at first. So when he came out of it and it was it, it was him, I was I was like, what? what? Did I miss something? I, I just like how Rogue has his like kit of bottles now. He's got phoenix. He's got diamond. Whatever. Also, also he didn't see like kazumi like grease showed up but he showed up like, to it, fight moves but it wasn't yeah but it wasn't like like we never saw kazumi himself like and outside of he's the, necrom the now his story is resolved so he's just here to fight moves oh that sucks <laughs> especially because like we were, we were talking about like the hyper battle special which like tell me when we, when we get to it or whatever yeah damn i'm like that's where they made it up yep um, yeah, and then just, so, like, starts to, I love when, like, he's like, oh, did you, like, bring the evil, to which, yeah, first off, so the thing that's been p powering the fucking purifier, purifier has been the evil driver. He's like, oh, yeah, no, that's kind of what I made the build driver off of. I just, like, I basically, because I saw that thing, I was like, like it all what? <laughs> it all makes sense, but you have to just look at that and go, really? That's your excuse, Joe? No one mentioned this till now? Yeah, because they're like, they're like, wait, like, didn't you build this thing from the ground up? He's like, oh, well, I built the machine, but the power source was always here. I was gonna say, like, I guess this thing isn't draining all their electricity. Because like Stark was like, to, when he was talking to when he was talking to Central on the phone, he's just like, I know you hit it, and you're gonna fucking find where it is because you hit it somewhere. I will find you and I will kill you. <laughs> Which means Takumi hid it in there without Soichi, without Evolt knowing. Well, because he probably found out about Soichi and then he's like, yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> no. I may be the devil scientist, but fuck that guy. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Even the devil scientist has standards. Right? Well, yeah, because like, we found out, like, oh, I know that this will probably cause war or whatever the rider system, but like... It'll all turn eventually, out good eventually again. it'll turn out all right. The sun will come out tomorrow. Bet your bottom. Bet my bottom. Bet your bottle. God damn it. <laughs> the box will come out tomorrow. <laughs> Bet your bottle. Oh. Bet your bottle dollar. Bet your 60 tomorrow. bottles. <laughs> oh, there's, a, there's a proper one in there somewhere. Oh. We'll um, find yeah. it eventually. When, when Sento, like, hands him, like, the evil driver, he's like, yeah, I made it. He's like, good job! I made this in a cave on Mars with a box of scraps! <laughs> Kiryu Sento built this in a cave! On Mars! In a fridge! In a fridge! With a box of scraps! Happy 10th anniversary, Marvel Cinematic Universe, a Yay. few days ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go see Infinity War in theaters now. It's yeah, great. It's awesome. <laughs> If you haven't been spoiled to shit, well, even if you have, <laughs> just, just fucking, just, just fucking crock and dad, just get Toku. I don't feel so good. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! People are just making that into a meme to cope with it. Okay, the best one by far that I saw was fucking Tony the Tiger being faded away into frosted flakes. Tony, I don't feel so great. <laughs> Tony. <laughs> oh my god. That's no! And then someone someone did it with fucking uh, Harry Potter when like Dobby's dying in Harry's arms and he's just like, I don't feel so good. And he dissolves. I'm like, fuck you! I take Dobby's death like super seriously because he's my favorite character. So regarding Gentoku's redemption arc, he calls up Sento during the episode and has him reprogram the chip in him so that they can't use it to kill him. That was that was awesome. I'd Did like he to do know, it remotely though? That's... I was gonna say, like, does his chip have fucking a router in it that Sento can hack into? Because how the fuck did he do that? Even no, Spy Kids had that as a plot point where they couldn't reprogram it. 
Well, it's like okay. The... Remember, going back to Kikaido reboot, <laughs> like you know, Komyoji or whatever put the data in his son's body, so it would be found. So, and I still maintain that I am not sure if I want an explanation on why that was there. <laughs> Just, just said to us like it's like all right, like Rogue's like, oh, okay, how are we gonna get this out of my body? He's like, don't worry, I know a guy. There's nothing I can't cut. <laughs> just like straps on a rubber glove, real tight on his arm. No, it just calls now calls, bend over. It just calls hero. Yeah, it's just not Rogue's ass. <laughs> Wait, well, how did when you they get, said how it was inside the... him, wasn't that you... basically everyone's reaction? Wait, how did you get rid of the chip? I, I pulled it out of my ass. <laughs> I Literally! Shit, I shit out the chip. Shit out the chip. <laughs> oh, Damn it, we shouldn't have made it a suppository. <laughs> shit up finish. <laughs> shit up no! finish. No! 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 <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> No! Oh, no! That's awful. I'm sorry. Um, it's fun watching Cross Magma beat the ever-loving shit out of Stark, I'll say. Yeah. No, and finally, because, like, this this pissed me off the whole series. Not once that every single time Blood Stark got his fucking ass kicked, because, you know, sometimes, like, when a rider, a rider, like, gets hit by a powerful attack, like, yeah. they roll the ground and they de Yeah. Not once until fucking now Stark got, like, hit so fucking hard that he de from it. I think that the only other time is maybe like rabbit tank sparkling when it fucking debuted. But, maybe, but yeah. Oh yeah, because so he did it to Night Rogue. So it so. took it took fucking Rogue's crack up finish crocodile kick to fucking finally do it. But it was because oh we need to see evil. So, so. much for your wardrobe, bitch. But yeah, and then so Nari uh, Nariaki like. Grabs the evil driver or whatever like that, and then he's just, just like, Fernanda! He saw it as like a fucking idiot just starts running towards Evolt, knowing that it's not her dad, but running towards him like an idiot, while carrying the evil driver instead of handing it to Sawa or the president, and just runs out and lets herself get nabbed by Nariaki, who steals it. And just... I mean, the whole time we knew that he was gonna gonna get it somehow, yeah. but we didn't know how. So the whole episode, I was just sort of waiting. Okay, he's gonna get it. He's gonna get the driver. I feel like they could have handled that a lot better. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, and... Nar Nariaki gets it, throws it over to Soichi, and I just wanted so hard for it to just like hit the ground and shatter into pieces again. <laughs> well, damn. And then <laughs> fuck. So, and then like Soichi like. I gotta give uh, praise to Soichi's actor. That was awesome. Just like, you could see, like, the excitement and just, like, he's shaking and trembling because he's so fucking happy he has his power back. It's like me when I get a new video game. Or, or Oh, me. Facecore brings up a good point. Evolt should have let Soichi's personality pop up and, like, cry for help, and me that would have lured Misura over. Oh, well, that would have actually made a lot of sense. That, that would have been, been so much better! Why didn't they do that? Yeah, it's perfect to timing that. too because now we know that that's a thing. Yeah, maybe they'll use that again. Oh, maybe, they'll, maybe they'll use that in another episode. They, I feel like they will, but this would have been the perfect, perfect be chance because, to use. Because because now that Evolt has his full power back, whatever he's gonna be like, I need Vernage. So like, no, he wants need... Banjo. No, I know, but he'll also be like, hey, I can have the Queen of Mars, so I can probably kill her. <laughs> So did you just say Bruno? Okay, you said the Queen of Mars because what I heard there for a second is I can grab Bruno Mars and <laughs> so you can grab Bernard. Is Bruno Mars a writer? Is <laughs> writer? The rumor come out. Um, and then we get the transformation of uh, Comrade Evil, and I love it. I love it. I love it. I so love it. I don't think I talked about his overall design. I, I'm kind of agreeing. I'm on the half of I don't like it, really, because there's too much going on. I especially don't like the helmet. I hate the cobra eyes. I like, like it. It's Bloodstark's uh, tail, but on in double scope. Uh, I didn't even I like, like that on Bloodstark. So. It's really it's really crowded and heavy looking, but I also kind of like it. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, like it, it's I, it's cool, but it's not something that I'd go like, holy fucking shit, that's the greatest suit I've ever seen. I feel like the angle of the tail horns should have been the same angle as Bloodstark's. The way they're angled now, I feel like is doesn't look as great as it could have. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Because uh, now it looks like just like weird alienotic horns sticking off to the side instead of what could have resembled like a feather in, in your cap style angle that Blood Sark has. See, like I was going to say like, oh, it doesn't, he doesn't even look like a rider, but I think that's the point because it's like an alien. That. So, um, but there, there's very clearly many different themes going on. The red and blue, Earth versus Mars. The rings and the, and the stars. Astronomy. He's from space. Which I, I should like that because I love space, but just... He has like a star map in his chest, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah, and actually, and if, you in the on, if you look on the design of the evil driver, it has like kind of the star map yeah. too. It's like a planetarium. Yeah. And the other thing is, like, if you look at the helmet just straight on, it looks like he's got fangs in on the mouthpiece, but the fangs are actually the tongues of the two snakes on either side of the helmet. It's such brilliant design. <laughs> Stuck. I could say everyone had too many good ideas and <laughs> decided to throw them all in. Um, the, even just, even like the fingers on the gloves are nice because they have like spikes that come off from the back of the fingers. So I I gotta give props to Evil Driver. Like we mentioned an extra, but like me and Ichi never even fucking thought. Oh, what a blood start voices the fucking belt and like I feel like we could have. My God. That. That uh, there is no better voice fitting to this guy's belt than his own fucking voice, and, and an he, evil laughs too. An evil laugh. <sighs> oh, I think I, I I didn't mention this. Yeah, because I was on last week. What's evil backwards? Love. 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 <laughs> He's covered <calling her> love. <laughs> um, but yeah. Like, this thing's awesome. Like, it, it goes like, uh, Cobra, right? system, evolution. And then it does, like, this cool, like, kind of, like, techno-robotic voice going, like, are you ready? But you can also hear Stark saying, are you ready, too, I believe. I had to listen real close to hear that. Yeah. It was really hard to make out. Yeah. And then while he's fucking cranking the lever, like, the belt, it just plays out to joy. And I'm like, the best. Wow. And then just, yeah, it goes like, Cobra! Cobra! Evil Cobra! And then you just hear just Stark's voice just laughing. And I'm like, the belt laughs maniacally. That's, Best belt ever. That's awesome. And then, and then, yeah. And then later on, he does like evil tech finish. And then it goes, Chow! Get it? Because Bills was Voltech fi vol finish. So yeah. this is evil tech finish. Oh so my god, you're right. Yeah. And yeah, if it, instead of the yeah at the end, it's chow, which means the rumor we read a while back was correct. Yeah, so that's... wow. Uh, and yeah, he's... of course, he has, like, debut illness, so he's, like, super broken as shit. He can teleport. He's super fast. He has really powerful punches. And actually landed a kill in his debut episode. Our old friend Bat Dad. Well, he's, Dad. he's not fucking around. Right? He's just like, I, I I, have my power. No one's going to get in my fucking way. And the best part is, when he transforms, he says that this is only Evolve Phase 1. And based on the preview, Dragon Form is apparently Phase 2, which means that possibly Rabbit Form is Phase 3. Rabbit's and or Phase 3? Yeah. When he takes over Banjo's body proper, that'll be the final phase, maybe? Jesus. So it would go like phase phase one, phase two, phase three, then final. Maybe. Uh, yeah, and so like, good debut, I think. Oh, stellar debut. Yeah. <laughs> stellar. Yeah, because yeah, it's from space. This is space. I'm trying to make stellar a regular part of my vernacular. Hmm. So next week, Soichi is in some sort of pimpin' suit for some reason. <laughs> I mean, the man's a god. He can dress however the fuck he wants. Are we gonna get a Spider-Man three moment where now that he's getting his power back, he's just like styling on everyone? <laughs> can we have that, please? <laughs> See, I, I got my hair cut today, so I no longer have my Peter Parker Spider-Man three hair. <laughs> now so. he just looks like Cole from Infamous. Yes. <laughs> You have to do it, which means I you have can't to see it, so I have to just guess. Which means you have to do a new version of that meme face of yours. Oh, fuck, fine. <laughs> I, I I hate myself, but I, I will do it for the sake of our, our meme our fans. face. Yeah, you know, the, one, the one where I'm just like my chin's like super fucking like awful looking. The one that everyone's been putting oh, on to things. I gotta take my glasses off for this. Anyway, so while you're doing that. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. Last week's episode was not much, but this week made up for it in spades. In space? In space. <laughs> <laughs> That's 
the image. I fucking hate myself. Yeah, there's my new hair, everybody. Enjoy it. <laughs> Someone just needs to fuse my face and Toma's face together. Oh, God. Don't challenge them. You know, just someone like Loma. <laughs> Loma. Yeah, Loma. Like, I'm, on I'm on it. I'm on it. On it. I'm just going to delete that picture on my phone. <laughs> Curse it back to the hellfires. I fucking hate myself. <laughs> All right. Why did someone post a crocodile wearing Crocs? Because Croc. Because. Oh. Oh yeah, because of the crocodile. I I, I get it. <laughs> Took um, me a second to realize the relevance. But yeah, it ended with like Gentoku just like holding his dad like in his arms, like uh, and like he called him like foolish son. He's just like, he's, like I know you will do well, my foolish son. And then he just goes play, and then just yeah, you see, just like Gentoku's just like, oh yeah, yeah. Oh my god, like the, the, his dead face as his father was just like falling off him. Yeah, I was like, that oh, was oh. actually jarring. Like. Cause like, and it means so much more because like, it's the regular Gentoku. And honestly, when we get to watching the Rogue series, because the first episode subbed, oh, you get we get so much more into Gentoku's character, and it's it's fascinating. Like I would honestly say Gentoku's probably the most developed character in this entire series. He's he's the Taiga of this fucking show. And that's the thing. Like I've been talking with people about like who's like the pri the secondary and the tertiary writers of different series. And up until this episode, I would have argued that Grease is the quote-unquote tertiary writer because they're the ones who tend to be the most well-written. They tend to have m more involved... They tend to be more involved with the backstory of the shows. Because mm -hmm. if you think of things like Ryugen and Chaser and, and Necrom and Chalice... Um, yeah, because the argument started about whether Garen or Chalice was the secondary tertiary writer. Yeah. My argument is Garen is the secondary because he's the friend slash rival and has to do more with the current plot. And Chalice is the tertiary because he is the non-human one with the better story who's more involved in the backstory. Also, we saw Garen in episode one. Yeah, also Garen happened first. Yeah. Not that that's always the indicator, but it's a factor. Anyways... So next week on Build, we get to see Suichi hanging around in a suit and evolve dragon form. Which... Something's gonna happen to Banjo! Help, which doesn't help with fucking evil's design. Someone's gonna get you with Banjo. Anyways! <laughs> your cook's in it! <laughs> this is the story of a bracelet... That's clearly well, not the okay, Chrono Morphin. First off, since I wasn't here last week for 11. <laughs> oh my god, you missed the best episode. I know. Uh, I'm very sad I wasn't I'm just going to sit here with my head and my, 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 my chin in my hands as you regale us on your opinions of last week's amazing That episode, episode was a thing. It was fucking amazing. No, it was <laughs> so fun. Because, like, okay, I, I've come to a realization that this year, I'm, like, especially around now, this period of time, um... I kind of, like, don't want to get, like, watch, like, dark, serious shit, anymore, like, for now. I want I want more fun in my, like, stuff I play and stuff I watch and stuff. So, like, again, not discrediting Build. I'm enjoying the fucking Build. Build's an amazing show. But, like, after that, like, I just want, I want fun. So that's why I've kind of been, like, going more towards being more excited to watch, like, Power Rangers as soon as it's fucking out. Because, like, just, that's more fun. And, like, pe people are starting to say now, like, oh, we're, like, 11, 12 episodes into this fucking series and, like, nothing relevant's happened. I'm like, because that's not the point. That's, like, well, this show's not going to have a huge thing, plot so. to it. The, the, it's cops versus robbers trying to get collection, steal back collection pieces, defeat the bad guy. That, argue, that's the plot. I would argue episode 10 is pretty fucking relevant. Yeah, no, I agree. I, like, I don't care what anyone says about this show. I think it's fucking amazing. Um, but yeah, no, episode, episode 11 was fucking great. I loved it. I loved all the jokes. I liked that, um, even when they were swapped and they were in their suits, it was still, it was the male suit actors for Patrick Nichigo and Nigo with just boobs. And a skirt. And then, yeah, and a skirt. And then for Patrick Songo, it was still the female suit actor. So that's why I think they could get away with it because it was the suit actors just wearing... Did you like my thumbnail last week? Yeah. That Jiro was... doing a zombie walk <laughs> that, and cake. That, I was like, what the <laughs> fuck? Just, <laughs> eh. It was so weird. Um, great. But yeah, like, we got, and like, I like that we got more into Sakia's, like, 
you know, inspiration for joining the global police and like he wanted to be like, he's like, yeah, you two are my fucking heroes. And it's like, okay, so you didn't want to just do it for the girls. Oh no, yeah, I want to do it for the girls. Well, that's definitely a thing too. Um, everyone was tricked by Pitchcock. Right? <laughs> I fucking love that name. I love that name too. It's just the perfect combination of awkward and clever references. Get it? Because he's a peacock. Yeah, and also Alfred, and Hitchcock, Alfred Hitchcock did a movie. Yeah, and Alfred Hitchcock did a movie called Birds. Yep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but no, it was a great episode, and it was amazing that the Power Rangers made a movie that was so bad. Even Jim Carter thought it was like the fuck, and then just held up. Wow, fantastic. Yep. Uh, but yeah, so uh, that was like that's one of my, that's one of my favorite episodes. I thought it was fucking fantastic. So, whoop, boob yeah. jokes. And so on to episode twelve. Yay! Toma's finally doing something! Hooray! God, Toma is like the most bland character in this whole fucking series. I reluctantly agree with you. Yeah, like he did some cool stuff, so like, good on him, but yeah. He's mentoring a child, he's being a big brother. Now, people are, will probably say to me, Hey, Lane, you hate, like, stories and plots in Toku that center around a child, and I'm like, no. It wasn't set, this plot wasn't of this episode wasn't centered around a child. It was centered around a collection piece. It just a child happened to be involved in with said collection piece. That so, is true. Use whatever logic loophole you like hey, to make yourself feel. Not better. wrong. It was about the collection piece. It just a kid happened to this get involved. This is the story of a kid who wants to get so, on the track yeah, team. This kid named Yuki. He wants to like have like the fastest track time on the track meet for tomorrow. So he can tomorrow. impress a girl who I wasn't sure was his sister or, or just like a girl just, he liked. I think it's a school school friend. It was just Sayaka's story for Madoka Magical with the gender swapped, and instead of music, it's running. Sure. What I'm kind of disappointed by is now that we've seen Frizo Amigo, he isn't, like, updated in the opening. Frizo Amigo. Yeah. I love that name. But now every time I see, like, that shot in the in the opening, I just get, like... I get chills. I get chills. Yeah. And they're multiplying. Ooh. Well, it's because he's control. Frizo Amigo. Fun fact, I'm, my my siblings and I are taking my mom to see Grease the Musical for Mother's Day. Hey! Oh, that's awesome! Front row seats, bitch! Beauty, beauty school dropout. Go back to high school. Yep. Um, so, our gangler of the week is one Jenko Copamino. Jenko Copamino! I heard that name the first time and I was like, yeah! This guy is a I'm fucking not amazing sure if that name! name is I'm not sure if that name is dumb or incredible. I, no, I, I'm so all about Jenko Copamino. I will respond with the El Dorado meme. Both? Both. Both is good. That's fair. <laughs> um, so, like, yeah, he's, like, Yuki's walking to school or whatever like that, and just, like, uh, fucking Copamino just, like, dashes through a bunch of people, explosions in his wake, and... I think he kills some students. He kills some kids. So basically, he is uh, Mario Kart. Those with, like with, remind, those remind me of like episode three of Zuocha with like the 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 hunter with like oh, yeah. the bow and arrow. And he just, just like up, blew up sniping people, yeah. cars and just killing people. On yeah, the road. I'm pretty sure he there were some dead people there. God. But yeah, Jinko is basically the Mario Kart gangler because he his collection item is a mushroom and he has the power of bombs. Yeah. <laughs> but that's not what mushrooms do in Um Oh, Blaze has mentioned the names of the treasures in our chat. Uh, the last week one uh, was Rollover Beethoven, and in French. <laughs> oh come on! The French name is Fade Brule Beethoven. That, that, that was the that was the theme song for the Beethoven movie, like the dog Beethoven. God damn it! It's like yeah, the, like during the montage where he's being like a really bad dog in the house, it's just like roll over Beethoven. Yeah, that was the theme song. And yeah, it was based on the Go Rotor from Go Andre. Yep. Uh, and then the one from this week is La Vie sur la Voie Rapide, which is life on the fast track. Which is a reference probably to Life on the Fast Lane. And obviously it is the Chrono Changer from Time Ranger. No! You don't say. You don't fucking say! God. <laughs> you know what? You We could call out fucking Toei for being lazy with that shit, but honestly, if you have the, the, the props, use them. <coughs> if you got it, 
Flaunt oh, it. Let the Toku fans know what you're about. There you go. I, I that was all I could come up with on the fly. Um, so I gotta give praise to the Lupins for this week. Wow, did they fuck with this guy? Oh, like, so hard. Like, first up, they're like the Power Rangers couldn't like deploy out to go catch catch him because he kept like running around so fast. Even though you fuckers have cars. Come on! We have to get our butts in those cars. We have vehicles! Right? Use them! And the Lupins did! And the Red One's power is specifically getting faster! Yeah, you know, to go, ah! <laughs> I miss that. I miss that too. Um, yeah, so like, they're like, oh, we caught up with you. So like, how? And we flew. That's cheating! We're thieves. Right? They actually yeah, used, yeah. they actually did it. They used their dial fighters to catch up to him. So we're, applause we're, for that. We're rule breakers. Go fuck yourself. Fuck, and the, then, fuck so, the toe. So then the they're tropes. like, oh, but we couldn't catch up with your amazing speed. And Jack goes just like, oh, I'm, I'm fast. And he's like, oh, yes, your speed is un- oh, com- go on. Un- 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 uncomparable yeah, to anything else. they him and then get him in the, yeah. And, he, and then he just like, they're like, oh, sweet. Okay, I'll show you my speed. And then all you just see is just Yumiko is just like grabbing the collection piece. Yeah, she's like, collection piece, get them. That was fucking amazing. I know. I was like, that. I was like, bravo, Lupins. That that was clever. Bravo, Lupins. <laughs> um. So yeah. So it's actually interesting that the the gangler goes the rest of the episode without using his collection piece that he stole. Because he just has to rely on his power of exploding balls, his beams, his yeah. big beams. Um. So yeah. So then the kid takes it, like mid throw. Or yeah. something, because like it gets tossed out of uh, their hands, and then like the Power Rangers show up. They start fighting the Lupins, even though, and like even uh, Yumika makes like a mention going like, "Yeah, should you guys be concentrating on like capturing the perp?" Yeah, like even later in the episode, the Lupins. G- <laughs> oh no, <laughs> that's awful. It. Like okay, later in the episode, the Lupins have already got the collection item, but they're still fighting uh, Jenko. <laughs> And my immediate thought is, you got the collection item. Why don't you fuck off and leave it to the Pados? Yeah. But they eventually do when he grows giant. But, yeah. But we just had to see Blade and Scissors get used one more time. Oh my god, that's so good. Well done, Blades. <laughs> We're looking at a morphed image of Lane's new, new now, face. Now, can you Toma. put that on the Slowpoke's body? <laughs> oh god. Um, you know they will. I know they will. It's Lane Toma. So yeah, L- Yuki is talking to Haruka, and she literally says to him, "Get first, or I will punish you." Yeah. Well, he says Batsu game like it's a playful punishment. No, it's really cool. Like Toma, sure. like, Toma, like he, like uh, Yuki, like runs, runs, like you know, uh, runs him, or whatever, like that, and like Toma, Toma's trying to catch up to him. And then we get like a cool like POV parkour shot of him like jumping off a wall. Parkour. That was really cool. Um. <laughs> Tomain, to Tomain. <laughs> there we go. Um, yeah, and then just like you, he's just like, oh, maybe I could use this item to make myself go faster. I'm like, so you're gonna cheat, you little shit? <laughs> you're fucking race, right? You asshole. I like how like the person at the race who's judging it just is totally okay with this kid wearing a thing on his wrist. Well, to be but... fair, they probably think it's just like a wrist accessory, so like whatever. I mean, it I basically mean, why would is. they expect it to be speed enhancing thing? Yeah, like, he, 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 to know. his urine was later tested positive for for steroids. <laughs> it was tested for, positive for for, for, for Lupin. It's tested positive for uh, Time Ranger for, for Lupus. Lupus. <laughs> Lupus Rangers. <laughs> oh, Lupus that's Rangers. terrible. I know it is. Lapis, I'm sorry. L- Lupus. Uh, Lazuli. Uh, <laughs> Lupus Lazuli. Now, now, I just want, now I just what want a picture of just like can we just put a picture in the corner of just like Lupin Lupin Blue's body but just with Lapis's fucking head. <sighs> I want that. We'll see if someone in the, we'll do it in the chat and then I won't have to do Jack. Who ate my fries? Lapis? Uh, fries. Pearl? I don't like food. Yeah, it was me. It was, it was Amethyst. Amethyst. Yeah, it was. So the reason that Toma is the focus of this is because Yuki makes reference to this Hinano Valley picture book, which was apparently a favorite of his dead fiance. And the, the basically the motive or the the message of the episode is that fairy tales can be stupid and abstract and make no sense. To quote to quote Robin Williams from from Hook, I don't believe in fairies. To also quote from Hook, I thought the 
was that fairy tales can help motivate people. That's what I was leading up to, if I hadn't been interrupted. Oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, it's not by you, by Lynn. Yeah, I mean. But yeah, so fairy tales can be abstract and, and not really apply to real life, but maybe just reading that will give you the strength to deal with reality's bullshit. Maybe reading fairy tales will make you better at cooking, Toma. Oh! oh snap! Um, so, like, uh, Toma, like, go, like throws, like, a card or whatever, like, a calling... There's those lane poke. Nice job. Wow, that took effort. It's looked very cute. At least I would have removed the edges of the image. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Anyway. Like, well, sorry. But yeah, so they so Toma throws one of his uh, the advanced warning cards right in the kid's window, and I just wanted to hear his voice echo through the night. Yo, cook, sir, sir, sir. No, I just would have loved to have gone to the like Yuki's head. Just <laughs> Oh, shit, yeah. shit, 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 shit. And just his blood cock. starts squirting out of his head. Oh, the fuck, 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 right? fuck. Yeah, oh, no, no, As, as no. soon as you see the kid, like, go and check his hiding spot, I you could tell right away that Toma was following him, was, was going to do some shit. Of course he was. But it would, ended up being more complicated than I expected. At that point, he swapped it out with a fake. Yeah, and, like, because, like... You're, I felt you're kind just... of dumb for not realizing that was what was going to happen. Cause like yeah, cause the like is, with it, I'm like using it. I'm like I'm like he doesn't look that is, much faster. Is there really any way we could have known that they had the capacity to make fakes? He just went and bought a time morpher and. <laughs> Yeah, yeah Lupin, pa- Lupin Ranger, Power Ranger is just the the universe where all other Sentais are an actual thing. So it's Akiba Ranger. <gasps> yep. He so Toma just went down to Akiba and bought a Chronomorpher. Here we go. Um, <laughs> no, but you know what? If they're able to like copy themselves, make disguises for said copies, and just like no, because you know what? That's a thing like thieves do. They when they're stealing something, they make a, they, they make a forgery to like replace it with the real one. That's interesting. So th- yeah, it's a thief trick. It's probably Lupin. The, if Raven was here, he probably confirmed Lupin the Third does and that. People in our chat are now saying that the gem in the collection piece was the fucking time it's the stone. time stone. <laughs> sure, <laughs> that's stretching it a lot. Time sure. for time stone. Power stone. Power stone. Oh man! In your gauntlet, you have the key. <laughs> Uh, anyways, so I was, yes. gonna, I was gonna sing another lyric, but that would be spoiler. No, yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Right. Um. So yeah. So Yuki goes to do the race or whatever like that, and then like the Lupins decide to like watch him do the race, and then uh, like oh I yeah. By like, the way, fucking uh, Copamino gets like his ass kicked by the Power, Power Rangers. Yeah. Which it was actually kind of lazy that they just went they went Power Kaiser Biker, and then they used Biker again. I was like, I was like, okay, guys, we've seen Biker like four times now. Like, They're just getting his appearances out of the way so we can move on. Yeah, I guess so. We're, we're making the way for, for Crane and Drill. I was like, they're gonna be next episode. Probably. Um, or very soon. Yeah. Um, so then, like, they watch the race. Oh, oh yeah, like, at some point, like, Tomo goes up to him, he's like, if you say, if you whisper very quietly, I'm fast, you'll you'll run faster. And so, like, when he goes to run away with the collection piece, like, just, he makes a realization, oh, what's that? The wind. The wind. And like I should have had my suspicions here because I'm like, like he doesn't suspicions. look that like suspicions sh- like gotta go that fast. much faster with it. I didn't think he was actually faster. I knew it was just him being motivated. Because like maybe the collection pieces don't work with humans. No, with they anglers. they explicitly said that. Thomas said it at least once or twice that putting that on isn't gonna do anything. Humans can't use these pieces. Yeah. Which makes which makes you really start to wonder about the these pieces like. There's clearly a distinction between the VS vehicles and these other gangler style Lupin collection pieces. Again, that's why I keep saying the master made the VS ch- vehicles. Like the, that was his thing. Like all the equipment that the the the, the Power Rangers and Lupin Rangers are using, that's all the master. The master made that. So that that's my guess. Like he just calls them collection pieces because he likes to be fancy. You know what would be interesting? Mm-hmm. I don't think they're gonna do it. But what I think could be an explanation for why there are two different kinds. What if the gangler style Lupin collection pieces need to be quote unquote purified and each change into a VS vehicle, just like the pendant? Because maybe That's the pendant actually a very good con- that, that might be it. Because if that was the case, if one of the ganglers had put the pendant 
in their safe, they would have had the power of a collection piece. Oh. So maybe if the Chronomorpher piece had been placed onto the VS Changer, it would have transformed into like a race car. There you go. That actually would be interesting. I'm actually super curious about that idea. I have to do that. Uh, but yeah, so he like Yuki wins the race, and then he like goes to like hand back uh, Toma the the collection piece, which he's like, oh yeah, I already have it. It was a fake. And he's like, oh, just the fake just shatters. And like I, I liked it though. I like this nice shot where like Yuki goes to like run up, and he's like he's like Kaido son or whatever, and then like Toma kind of just stands there with like his head like looking back towards him, and I was like I was like okay Toma that that was a. That's a nice little that, shot. That know, was man. a throw your towel at your young apprentice <laughs> moment. Hey, kid. Catch. Catch. <laughs> Max Mean Joe just proceeds the rest of his fucking uniform and yeah. jump strap. Um, yeah, and then he just tells him, you know, keep, keep doing what you're doing, kid. You do you. Keep chasing your dreams. Keep chasing your dreams. So, this is an okay episode. Again, I was happy with it because Toma did a thing, finally. So I'm happy Toma did a thing, finally. Right? Um. Yeah. So next week, uh, apparently it's a Umika and Sukasa themed episode because they go to a theme park and then they get stuck together and then. And there's one shot of Umika in like a different thief outfit that looks really good. Yeah. So I'd like to think that maybe this will be the ep- it'll be Sukasa and Umika who kind of Bridge unite the unite the teams. That. That sounds in line with Toei's very sexist writing. Because, no, because we've seen in earlier episodes, Umika's always just kind of, like, hinting at to, like, the other Lupins, just going, well, what if we just, like, team up with them? And then Kyrie's like, fuck that! They'll get in our way. I'm like, no, if you guys explain what the fuck you're doing, maybe the Power Rangers will understand. I still want the thing that bridges the gap to be Sakuya and Umika's love. Oh. Yeah, that's a one-sided love. She could warm up to him, maybe. I'm, maybe oh, he'll actually no. save her life at one episode, and Ooh. she'll start to fall I'm for I'm not him. sure, but I'm looking forward to finding out what happens, and I like theme park episodes. <laughs> right? Yep. Um, yeah, and so they'll they'll probably be the ones to unite the teams. Well, because like Sukasa see. has her suspicions that like oh the, the who the Lupins are, and, and, because, and again, and Ubi right. has always kind of been thinking, well, maybe we should work together. I know I said this before, but I can't wait for them to find out that they are the Lupins, so Sukasa can just go, "Fucking, I knew it!" I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> just, just Kishu, you owe me twenty bucks. Fuck. Just hands are twenty, <laughs> and Saki is just all heart shattered because the woman he loves I is tried a to kill you <laughs> several times <laughs> oh my god John. Jay's just like huddled in the corner I've shot her I've shot her I've shot her I'm trying to kill her I'm a horrible person <laughs> quits the force <laughs> I'm dating a phantom thief fuck alright so let's get into our feature topic which I guess since it's Kuma Tel Aviv versus Greece fuck it play the build intro again So I gotta say, this was really good. This was really good. Thanks, thanks for. I hope today I haven't been talking too much on air. I feel if like anything, you have not been talking enough. Yep. Yeah. I, love I actually was you. unable to watch this because oh. Oh, I had uh. to finish something for my grandparents tomorrow. But I would like to, if you don't mind me staying. No, of I, course. Just, I'm just giving that disclaimer so it doesn't so. No one listens, and they're like, hey, it's like she didn't watch it. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not the first time, so it's not anything surprising. But we do recommend you watch it afterwards. It's, if you like Grease, you should watch it. Yeah. I definitely want to watch it, and I don't mind spoilers for it. So sorry for the interruption. You can cut this out if you want. No, I don't it's good. Um, so, yeah, it starts with Cross Charge and Grease fighting, because this is, like, back in, like, episode, like, 17, 18, when, like, Cross Charge was a thing, and, like, I Grease was still I did not miss evil. Cross Charge. Yes and no for me. I'm like, I like the form, but, like, I don't miss that too much because, uh, eh. Anyways, so... So, so this was back when Greece was an enemy. Yeah, he was the asshole. Around, the, ti- around the time of the tournament arc, maybe? He, he was the mark with the mouth. Oh. Well. Gar would be like, fuck you, that's Deadpool's thing. 
Um, so the, the premise of the episode is that Greece felt bad since the crows interfered with their battle earlier, so he gives Banjo the Kuma and Tel Aviv full bottles as a way of saying, sorry, they fucked our shit. Which kind of, like, go foreshadows just, like, future of just Kazumi being, like, a really, really nice and chill dude. And foreshadowing him and Banjo being bros. Yeah. Bonj bros. That was awful. Bro-jo. Bonj bros? There you go. <laughs> um, they have the true hill bros. <laughs> um, anyways... So, uh, they go back or whatever, and then just probably the best character in this entire fucking thing, uh, shows up this Gentaro-looking motherfucker from Forza. Um, His name is Ubukata Masugu. And just... Hokuto's rampaging tractor! Complete with, like, animated introduction. And then just the Trideron horn. You just hear, like, and I'm just like, What? Is the Trider on a tractor now? Yeah. They just re reused the sound effect? Yeah. The tractor on? <laughs> I just want to see, like, the Trider on with just giant tractor wheels. Right? It's, it's, like a, it's like a new form. Ooh, type tractor. Type tractor. <laughs> type tractor. Oh, why wasn't there a fucking shift car that was a tractor? Wow. Oh, man. Um, yeah, so he, like, comes in and he's just like. I want like, coffee. Oh, I was, yeah, he's like, I want coffee. I was following this common rider, but I lost him in this area. And I just love that Bonjo and Miso are just like, oh my fucking god, we have a customer! <laughs> Why'd you come out of the fridge? And then he's like, well, this is where our secret, and just like fucking Miso just punches him, and just like, he's like, ow, that fucking hurt. <laughs> yeah, that's a little, uh, Which, dumb of him. I gotta say, the second best character in this entire special was Misara, because it's like, she just pulls a katana out of nowhere and pulls out the whole kiza. I will cut you. Oh, and yeah, goes I remember over. back when she would say that and she like pulled I a miss, I miss that. And then like, and then uh, goes up to Ubu, uh, Ubukata just being like, cut you too. Whoa, whoa, all right, sorry, sorry. So like, Banjo goes and gets like a canned coffee or whatever like that. And the, yeah, like, it's like, no, go get go get proper coffee, like beans. Go give me some coffee go, beans go or I'll beans. fucking cut so Bonjo, you. Yeah, Sabatra so goes off and then like, and then he's like, all right, all right, I'll drink the cold coffee. Sorry. No, oh, oh, it's so hot. Oh my God. Mmm, <laughs> coffee. And so then Sento shows up and he's like, he like comes up and he's just like, what the fuck's going on? And just like, he puts down like the Kuma t- uh, TV bottles or whatever like that. And he's like, oh my God, I found the bottles my boss has. And like, he like, grabs the spoon, takes Misora, like, holds her as a hostage. And he just holds whole, her hostage with a spoon? With a wooden spoon. And then the whole time he's He Misora, fucking licks it, like, yeah, all he, like, licks it. He's just like, ugh. Just, like, puts it up to, like, her neck. And the whole time, like, Misora's just looking all, like, dazed and happy. And just like, ah! Because he called her cute. Yeah, so called she, her cute. She, she's been, like, awestruck that so, someone like, actually said it to her. And, which like, is really weird, because she's the net idol. You'd think she'd have heard that hundreds of times. Maybe not from a guy who was your type. Maybe she just doesn't yeah. have chat on. Well, remember, she's, like, a seven-year-old and, like, a something, like, teenager. Stop creepy. making it creepy. Um, but, yeah, and, like, the whole time, like, he's talking or whatever, she's just making this, like... These faces are just like, oh, he called me cute. Oh. Like, he, like it, it's it, it's hard to describe. You have to, like, watch it and see, like, her facial reactions. This episode brought amazing. back to me Sora that I like, except for the, the top knotted ponytail that oh, I missed. Cindy Lou Who look. Right? Uh, oh, and then we get, like, one of Sento's patented just, like, fuck you flips. He you fucking like, flipped the dude. I loved it. Yeah, like, when he did to his Ariki. <laughs> um... And so they're like, he's like, he's like, all right. And then he, then he turns into a, he turns into a smash. The freeze smash. The freeze smash, which I forgot how awesome that fucking guy is. That smash is. So because it worked last time, Build responds with Nin Nin Comic. So applause to the show for keeping track of its own continuity. Yeah, no, this, this special was really good for continuity. And like, which Ichi noticed and I, I didn't, but we've seen him before. Uh, our friend Masugu was the leader of the people from Hokuto that Rogue kidnapped and freed in episode 32. Yeah, and we see him, and I'm just like, oh, that is him. Holy shit. To quote Gar, oh, yeah. 
Best side character ever. So, like, that that's amazing. So, like, good continuity for that. Um, and so then, like, we get, like, his fucking backstory. And it's just, like, it's, like, oh, yeah, like, you know, I live with my grandma. And just, like, I was helping her on the farm. And then, like, she got sick, so I had to bring her to the hospital. But then some Hokuto soldiers stopped me. And then Kazumi came and, like, saved me and beat the shit out of them. And then, like, I looked up to them. And then we get the origin of the dog tags for, like, Cosme and the Heart Smash. Oh, uh, they got them. Trio. Masugu made them. He in, made them. Including and, one for himself. Yeah. Which explains that, the fifth one back when we were talking about them in the news. Yeah, stories. and he gives them to him, and Cosme's just like, no, oh, fuck you, like, being, like, his self, like, I, I don't care, but I actually do. That's stupid. Yeah, that's stupid. He, he, he's doing the thing where he's keeping himself emotionally distant so he doesn't have to get attached to anyone in case he dies. Even though he does, anyway. Well, yeah. I he he thinks the guy's cool well. by the end. Yeah. So then, um... So Misora throws over Kuma and Televi to build, and then we get build Kuma Televi. Yeah, which it's uh, Honey High Vision Kuma TV. Then we oh, get they have together. honey in there. And then we get this. We get this like a very like enthused like yay, <laughs> which I really liked. So this is a so the Kuma half the the eyepiece is clearly a recut a retool of Gorilla, and the hand is a retool of Panda, which makes which sense. makes sense because yeah. yeah. But honestly, I this is like another one of my favorite best matches. It looks so cool. And if you looked on the TV side of uh, like on like the uh, the left the side helmet? of his helmet, other side, it, it was like it was like a it was like chrome. It was like a nice like really yeah. really shiny. And it had like an antenna on it. Yeah, and it looked just really really cool. It almost looked like an eyebrow. But yeah, it was a really it was a re it's a really nice looking form. And like it's just hilarious that he's got televisions all down the fucking left arm of him. And then we get to the fucking. Like, one of the TVs on his body turns on, and then we get, like, this newscaster, which we heard when we talked about scans and, like, info about this special. There was a, they got an a actual guest anchor actual, woman. Yeah, an actual oh, newscaster. Oh, yeah, that! And so, we see this anchor woman, and she has, like, this plush, like, TV hat on her head. It's, it's, and she's it's, wearing this, and then she has, like, these, it's stuffed, like what, these it, stuffed bears sitting beside her on the table, like, as her co-anchors. It's like the okay. kind of hat that you'd put on your me in Street Pass. Yeah. Okay, I want 100, like, I went from, I want to 80% see this, to I have to see the news anchor with a TV hat and two teddy bear co-anchors. Right? Yeah, and it's just like, and they're not, they, the, the bears don't do anything, they're just there, they're just these two stuffed bears. And the name of her news show is Give Your Troubles a Rider Kick. Yeah. Is which, it really? Yeah. Because yeah. she tells, she's pretty much like explaining why, uh, how, why a rider kick is like the most best move to use against them. Like, she spends the entire episode giving Build hints on what to do. It's literally the power of game facts. Oh yeah. my god. And it's like, it's fucking amazing. Like, oh, your enemy's using ice, but if you introduce any sort of inconsistency into the ice, it breaks down. Oh, okay, I'll just throw honey at yeah, it. Yeah, so like he, like, so he can manifest like a ball of honey with like Cause bear. bear. Cause, yeah, because bears eat honey. bears, as you know, can summon honey out of nowhere. So then he throws the, the, bother. Throws the honey uh, at the ice wall, and then like it turns into like honey shaved ice, and like that's what Santa says. He's like, ooh, it's honey shaved ice, or whatever. Yeah. And, so he smashes Although it what I off. really have to question is if you look at the inside of the pant like the bare hand, it's a very flat surface. So what I would like to know is how the motherfuck did he crank the build driver with it? He just took like probably the palm of the of the hand and just went like But, eh, eh, but eh, it's eh, so eh. flat that if he tried to the rounded edge of the build crank he would have like slipped <laughs> off it. If you're careful enough you can probably do it. At least with Gorilla also, there was like a hand. hand slot. Yeah, whatever. Um so then, like, uh, another, like, thing is with the, the Kuma uh, side is he can turn pretty much, he can become pretty much Ogoma Sky Blue. Which makes sense, because yeah. bear. Yeah. I love that, like, the chest piece for the bear half has, like, a fucking bear crossing sign on it. Well, there's bear crossing signs. That's no, I know, but I think that was brilliant. Yeah. And then we get his fucking uh, vortex finish which was fucking awesome he like yeah he turns giant summons a giant bear claw with like and then like slashes him with it but then like a giant trout just like appears behind the smash <sighs> and then like the trout fucking falls on him and I'm just like cause like bears eat trout so, so this is the power of bears honey and trout in one bottle yeah and I'm just like are oh, you sure it was then, a trout and not and, a salmon 
Oh yeah, it was probably it was probably a salmon. Maybe. Um, and then yeah, and also out of the TVs on his around his chest, he can also summon like holographic bear claws to come out and like slash it. Oh and my smash god! It. And I'm just like, oh, this form is busted. Like no wonder we never see it again. And like it kind of like it makes if I still have my build stuff, I would most definitely want to get the the TV Kuma bottles. I wish there was a TV bottle that was like a DX quality one because it the actually only one that shakes. Ever, yeah, doesn't have a shake bit. Yeah, in it. and no, and then the actual like the toy, the TV bottle, it's like solid all white, solid pearlescent white, which in the 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 special it's not. It's just like white with like the shaker. And I'm like, like I'm the like, the part that's not the TV is transparent. Yeah. Um, and then it just ends with, like, Grease showing up or whatever like that, and then Sento just, like, dehenching, she's just like, eh, here, take him back, and, like, gives him to, uh, Ubaga or whatever, and then, uh, he, he gives him to Kazumi, and Kazumi's just like, hey, those tags, those are actually really cool, you know what, I'll take them. He tries to be all tsundere with him, he's like, the, the fucking jarring of your dog tags is annoying, give them to me. Yeah, he's like, oh, let's take them. I didn't even want them or anything, Baka. And then, yeah, <laughs> Baka. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, so then he, like, he feels super happy that, like, Kazumi kind of, like, acknowledged him. Senpai noticed me. Yeah, Senpai noticed me. And just, like, oh, and then, like, uh, at one point he gets, like, knocked down or whatever like that, and Misora is just like, oh my god, is there anything I can do? Water, I need water. And she's like, Mizu! Mizu! And just, like, fucking darts off or whatever, because, like, I guess she just, like, really has a huge crush on the guy now. And then we come back to, like, Bonjo coming, uh, runs back into the cafe with bags of coffee beats. But then he wear, he's also wearing a sombrero, and he has a tan. Did he go to, like, Mexico or Did Colombia he actually, like, or some shit? Colombia, I'm guessing. Oh, there you go, uh, Emily. So there's a screenshot of... There's a screenshot of, like, the bear with the, the news anchor. Okay, I've... Oh, Jesus. Yeah, it's just a stuffed plush TV on, on her head. <laughs> I love this. Uh, I, I... It's amazing. It's uh, absolutely ridiculous. Oh, I love it. Face Core brings up a good point. He, Kazumi is going to kill Masugu when when he finds out that Mitan has a crush on him. Oh, <laughs> just like you know those dog tags? Yeah. Shatter. <gasps> uh, but yeah, just this is probably honestly the best hyper battle like Telebikun special I've seen since the Drive one because I love the Drive type high speed one that was that one was man. pretty good i think i like this better oh this is this is a definite like close second if, if not probably better like this was this was such a treat so like anyone anyone who watches build you have to watch this because it's canon yeah and it's surprisingly really good canon right like, holy shit and it's good with its continuity and then like they bring up this character later in another episode and like oh man just like well done. Kuma TV is fucking awesome. That's one of my new best favorite best matches. So I would love to see fucking Kuma TV tri uh, Hazard. Oh, yeah. Oh, busted. my God. What would the channel be? <laughs> oh, the news anchor woman just like, she's like all like just evil. Just be like, <laughs> kill him! Kill him! Kill him with everything you have! <laughs> Welcome to Kill Him TV. Oh I just want so bad for just Masugu to go up to, to Kazumi. The number one just like, channel for murder. Just like, Kashira, Kashira, I fucked me, Tan! <laughs> Boom! Oh my god. <laughs> um, yeah, so the, the, that's it. And Masugu it. went on to get saved by Rogue. I mean, and since it's on the notes, since in case anyone forgot, the total Yosha Lucky count for Q Ranger is 324. I kept that but in case we need it. We, we know that's gonna go off once we fucking watch. Q uh, Ranger versus Super Space Squad? Yeah. Oh, I can't wait for that. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's it. Hooray! Here in the Civil War. So, Good night, everyone. Thanks for listening. All right. So, Chikai, Mario Sentai Cast Ranger. Next week, continuing our efforts to catch up with build side specials, we will be talking about episodes two and three of the best matches specials. Oh yeah. Since they're short enough and they're both out, we can cram them into one topic. And yeah. I actually have those, so... Yay! Yay. And yeah! Hopefully, and hopefully, hopefully. hopefully we'll have all the main four back next week. I hope so. I Thanks know, for here. having me despite the suddenness of me having to be on Discord. And... God, I hope I'm there next hey, week. Hey, we, we always make it work, my dear, so always happy to have you. All right, so as usual, the primary source of our hijinks is castranger.podbean.com. Oh, yeah. 
Check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Radio Cast Ranger. Tweet at us at XC Studios. Join our public Discord, which you can get to from our hub site so you can listen to the show live uh, and chat with us on a casual setting. Check out our merch store. And don't forget to check out and possibly subscribe to our Patreon so you can help us make the show better for you. Also, uh, just as an update, uh, Indigo Caster, uh, Anna, is now one year now old. one year old. Yay! So, yay! Happy Bappy! Happy Bappy! That's a Happy thing I birthday! Say Good night! Or goodbye, whatever. <laughs> I'm not your clock. Radio Sentai Cast Ranger is brought to you by our generous patrons, Oliver Nilsson, and viewers like you.